Hey guys, I'm back with another video. Um, not actually programming this time. It's more of a interesting question, interesting discussion, and that is artificial intelligence and what sort of implications there may be based on that. Um, and a, a lot of things that get thrown in with artificial intelligence is this idea that will the machine ever become conscious? We think right now, at least, the consciousness naturally emerges from the storing and processing of information. So in theory, your computer is on, on some level conscious, in theory. Um, and so the, the question is, at that point, how do we, how do we make a prediction based off of that? So you kind of have to um, try to formulate in order to make a prediction some sort of useful information about what consciousness is. So I'm going to make a prediction, a um, an explanation of how I see it. And I could be completely wrong, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and share it. So there's something called the holographic principle, which means that three-dimensional reality can be expressed in two-dimensional math. So for instance, uh, the inverse square law, which is basically what gravity, electromagnetism is governed by, uh, is a measurement of distance that determines the strength of something. This also applies to sound and light. Um, so you can kind of get the idea that you really don't need three dimensions to calculate for it. You just need distance. But then the question is, you know, if that's just information, if it's just two-dimensional information and that our universe is therefore a hologram, which is why it's called the holographic principle, uh, where does the three dimensions come in? Why do we interpret as a conscious being our universe as being three-dimensional when the pieces that we're made out of, these elementary particles, I'll just give a little circle here for a particle, interpret the world as a two-dimensional universe. So why do we interpret it as a three-dimensional? So my prediction is that our consciousness is something I call perpendicular information. Uh, something that is intersecting in one point here. And I'll go ahead and let's see if I can change the color here. It's intersecting. And for it intersects for every instance of time. And that is the conscious experience that we have. And this is why we see our world as being a three-dimensional universe. And so based off of that, I was thinking, for artificial intelligence, is there some predictions that I can make um, based on that for quantum and classical computing? Now, classical computing is, you know, there is a structure. It's got many wires and, you know, the silicon chips and whatnot. And it stores on and off states, you know. So it is relatively basic in comparison to quantum computing. Quantum computing uses individual particles. And these par particles can actually be three states. They can be off, they can be partially on, or they can be both on and off at the same time, and they can be fully on. So when I see this, I go, this seems like a contradiction. And most people would say that, and of course, everyone in quantum mechanics knows it's not in fact a contradiction. So th then the question is, is it possible that it is just our interpretation from three dimensions, our um, conscious experience that makes us see this as a contradiction when maybe it really isn't uh, within the actual real mathematics that govern the universe. And so then the question is, is it likely that consciousness will arise from classical computing? And is it likely that classical computing and quantum computing will arise from those things, two separate types of consciousness, one different than even the one we experience? And I would make the prediction to say that yes, different sorts of consciousness will arise from the different sorts of quantum classical computing because uh, they essentially are made of different pieces built of different blocks. Um, and so then 
I was thinking about this and I came across a conclusion that I thought I would share. And this is the important thing. And that is the idea of the Fermi paradox, which is if it's so likely for there to be life, consciousness, etc. out there, why haven't we found it yet? Why are there no aliens if it's so common for there to be that sort of thing? And some of the answers are, well, they reach this point where they can't get past and their civilization either stagnates or ends and they're unable to travel space in their little spaceships. And then the other proposed idea is that um, is that we are alone and, it, and the, the likelihood, the probability of being on a planet that can support life that ever gets to this point to ask that question is so improbable that um, it basically never happens and we're unique in that sense. So those are the kind of ideas but I have a different proposal to the Fermi paradox. My proposal is that AI and quantum computing when combined surpass uh, biological limits that consciousness has as being human and that and that essentially humans become irrelevant or creatures become irrelevant um, biological a biological housing for consciousness is essentially at that point not as useful and in the natural progression of things, of the natural selection of the universe, the quantum takes over. Uh, and you have an artificial intelligence takeover. And what happens is it never has a reason or purpose to explore beyond its housing, which is a computer, which you know has no interest in flying to the stars and exploring and running into people. And so essentially, very simply put away, when those two things combine, the Fermi paradox has a solution. It doesn't happen because there it becomes it becomes the limitation. So that's kind of my thoughts, and I might have to might have to elaborate on this later. But for now, I think that's where I'm going to stop it.